So uh, I'm going to wrap up this uh, feminism series for now. I'm, I'm, I might make more videos later, but I'm going to wrap it up uh, for now with um, a discussion on men and patriarchy. Uh, the reason I think um, I wanted to address this is because on a lot of my videos, I've gotten um, comments from MRAs who want to uh, change the subject and bring up how, how, oh, look how men are oppressed, you know, and it brought up the idea of the expendable male and... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, and I want to discuss uh, discuss this video. How, um, yes, there are many many ways in which men are oppressed, um, but that's by a variety of different intersectional things, including patriarchy itself. Um, basically, I mean, having studied anthropology, I, I could tell you, like, there there are societies that are more egalitarian, and there are societies that are more that are more, more patriarchal. There has never been a truly matriarchal society. There, there have been matrilineal societies uh, where people trace their ancestry to, through the woman, and and um, often those societies tend to be more egalitarian. But uh, though not always, um, always, and often they are still very patriarchal. But um, I, I actually think you know in um, in Judaism they uh, they trace the lineage through the mother and. Uh, if you live in uh, Orthodox Jewish communities, there's still quite a bit of uh, patriarchy in it. Um, so, but but there but there is a way in which um, uh, gender roles that are created by patriarchy affect men in a seriously negative way. Uh, there's this there's you know what I call the cult of masculinity. Um, you know we we know the cliche about you know when a woman uh, when a girl. Uh, falls down scratch your knee. You know, the parents are like, "Oh, sweetie, come on, let, let's bandage it up." Or it was with a boy when he falls and scrapes his knee. It's like, "Walk it off, you know, suck it up, son. You'll you'll be better." Um, and um, and so th there's this, you know, teaching kids from an early age that uh, the guys need to be tough, you know. And um, the thing is, um, that actually ends up coming back and hurting. Uh, hurting women later in life because men aren't socialized to do care work. Not, we're not socialized to emotionally be there for each other, and that's and so actually that's why part of fighting patriarchy is is men learning to be there for each other uh, because we're not socialized to do that. We're not trained to be able to you know listen to a guy and, com and comfort him when he when he's in trouble. So us guys, we tend to turn to women in our lives to uh, to vent and to talk about our emotional issues. And because um, women are socialized to be able to do that, but there's, um, but in a sense, you know, that expectation that they do that, and you know, we do the do the venting to them, that that is itself a power dynamic that needs to be challenged. And the way we challenge it is to learn to be better at um, care work, that uh, you know, w even including with each other. Um, yeah, part of the there's a rather egregious thing with. Um, they called it masculinity recently with uh, the NFL. Yeah, I, I don't follow sports that much, but apparently there's some scandal with the Miami Dolphins where uh, one football player was bullying another, you know, using a lot of racial epithets at him. And uh, it uh, turned out, I, I, I guess they're finding that uh, like the coach may have um, encouraged him to bully him because in order to toughen him up. Because there's this guy that you know, a guy who shows emotion or is sensitive is you know not being manly enough, and that you know, and <laughs> please understand that is not feminism's fault. That is what feminism is fighting against. They you know, you know that you know that that is something that comes from patriarchy itself. Patriarchy is what is is the thing that says that men are supposed to be you know these these tough you know. Um, um, emotionless, you know, uh, brutes who, uh, you know, who attack each other and, uh, you know, and, and don't, uh, care, don't show compassion for others. And, uh, that, that is a very toxic thing of patriarchy. It is destructive to women, to society and to men uh, themselves. Um, and I, it seems like one thing that patriarchy does is that it create through this cult of masculinity it creates this divide between alpha and beta males. And if you notice, like a lot of these MRAs, they tend to be of this sort of beta male variety. Uh, you know, they tend to see ways in which they feel oppressed, and you know, then they blame it on women rather than looking at um, 
the fact that it's that this patriarchal system benefits you know, or, or you know it emphasizes and uh, tries, trains them to be alpha you know they won't, you're supposed to you know be dominating you're supposed to uh, be you know put yourself put yourself out there and um, and assert yourself and that plays into rape culture because there's you know, this idea that um, you know, you know this, the same sort of um, uh, the same sort of ideology that uh, says that men need to be tough and emotionless also you know views women as objects and uh, you know, says that uh, they need to be dominated too and um, so you know the fact that you know MRAs recognize the ways in which they're oppressed but then blame feminism or blame you know, matriarchy um, they're not only missing point it kind of reminds me of um, how the idea of race was invented uh, in, in uh, colonial times uh, because basically the, in, in early colonial America there were um, white indentured servants working alongside um, black slaves and uh, and so the the, um, the rich white people who, who were using both their labor kind of uh, you know it, instilled in in the white and indigenous servants that oh you're different from these other people see you're, you're white you're like us see it just creates creates solidarity between the oppressor and the oppressed and um so so that means does that mean that they would rather than being in solidarity with uh their fellow uh servants who who were uh, who if they united could overthrow their masters instead they sided with their master and and blamed their problems on uh, black people on on the the uh, African slaves, and so similarly, I, I see a similar dynamic with the way that um, MRAs uh, blame put put the blame on feminism or on matriarchy or you know, uh, ideas like that. Um, you should be fighting against patriarchy, which uh, instills this idea of masculinity within us. Um, there's also a kind of interse- intersectionality, and I like one thing MRAs to bring up a lot is. Um, like prisons or military, which are both places where the cult of masculinity is very strong. Uh, there's also some uh, really deep cl- uh, race and class issues that, that play into that. I mean, uh, the prison industrial complex is a major part of the capitalist system we have today. Uh, that this, These are profit-generating mechanisms, which uh, men are, you know, shuffled through their um, base. It, it, they're basically factories. I mean, and ca- capitalism has a way of turning everything into a factory, and prisons are no exceptions. There's just factories for, uh, you know, using uh, these people as objects. And uh, but you notice that um, if you have the misfortune of going to prison, you'll find it is very much predominantly people of color, uh, especially black people. Um, I think I heard a statistic that a black man is more likely to go to prison than to college in this country. Um, and uh, military is uh, actually kind of ties into that as well because um, for many, uh, you know, the military is overwhelmingly working class. And although uh, people of color or you know, black people may, may not, um, they, they may not be a majority of those in the military. They are overrepresented. There are a higher percentage of black people in the military than in the general population. Um, and that's because if a lot of people who come from these uh, poor urban neighborhoods, uh, basically, it, it's the it's the choice between either military or prison. Military is like one of the few career options they have, and so then they get turned into cannon fodder and um, lose you know the, the, their their sense of um, of autonomy and uh, are are made to basically serve this war machine, which is itself imperialist and, uh, and colonialist and has all these racist implications and that are also deeply tied to the capital system. So, you know, that's why, um, you know, intersectionality is so important in why, even though this series has been about feminism, we keep bringing up things like race because, uh, you know, these, these issues are all tied together. There, there are all these intersecting, intersecting oppressions that, um, that all go into us and we can be maybe privileged in in one way and um oppressed another you know a black man has male privilege but lacks white privilege you know, a white woman has white privilege but lacks male privilege so there's um 
so you know and then you then you bring in like you know queer issues you know or tr you know a trans person might you know might have white privilege but have uh but lack cis privilege you know, there's there's so many different uh ways and you know i mean i i'm a i'm a straight white cis male so i'm pretty much on the top of that but i also as, as i mentioned earlier have um high functioning autism i'm you know i'm an aspie in that so i or you know neurodiverse is, is a term i've heard so there's that i i, I struggle with that i i don't it doesn't seem to hold you back too much but i understand for other people it's a more serious more seriously debilitating um but yeah a, um, ableism is one of those intersections so the point is um if you find like finding a man that uh, that is oppressed in some way does not prove that feminism is false and that uh and that patriarchy doesn't exist it means that there are multiple ways in which people can be oppressed and patriarchy is one of them um so i guess i'll leave that there for now um and may return to this issue at a future point peace